Hello and thank you for downloading the History Hour podcast from the BBC World Service with me, Max Pearson. The past brought to life through revealing personal testimony. But first, we're going to delve headlong into the deeply disturbing world of the French penal colony system as operated in the 19th and 20th centuries. The most notorious of these establishments was far from the French homeland off the northern coast of South America and was known as Devil's Island. The regime was brutal, escape was nigh on impossible and the chances of surviving a long sentence were slim. It was a system designed to inflict punishment and pain as much as to remove the most dangerous criminals from French society. The penal colony system lasted for a 100 years and was only abandoned in August 1953. Alex Last has been speaking to Bashir Saoudi, whose father Cassie was an inmate there and one of the few to survive. He was saying this, they tried to do everything to break you to the point of death. That was their objective, you know. Their objective is really, really to kill you. They, they treated prisoners worse than animals. Kasi Saoudi's ordeal began in Algeria at the age of just 20, when, in 1927, he and two cousins were arrested by the French colonial authorities for the murder of his French employer. Kasi was innocent, but he knew one of his cousins was responsible. Still, he refused to name names, knowing if he did, his cousin would be executed. So instead, all three were sentenced to decades of hard labour in the penal colony in French Guiana, known as Devil's Island. But first, they had to survive the voyage. He said they were put at the bottom of the ship into the cages and they just pushed them in and the strongest survived, like, you know. The the crossing took one month. One month? One month. And I think they filled the ship with something like 300 or something. I mean, they really, really pack it, you know. He, he, he described it as, as like hell on earth, people being sick and people being, being dead in front of him and thrown overboard and uh, people starving. M- many died on the way. Since it was established by France in the 1850s, some 70,000 inmates passed through the network of prisons which were located in the swampy jungles of French Guiana and on the islands just off its coast. Devil's Island itself was small and traditionally only housed political prisoners, but became the name given to the whole penal colony. Many inmates like Cassie were kept in prison camps on the mainland, where prisoners doing hard labour would be sent to clear the jungle or build roads that seemed to go nowhere. From the moment of arrival, the nature of the brutal prison regime was made clear. In order as well to, to prevent any uprising and things like that, the first time you got there, they get a prisoner out. Someone, they sent us to death. They call all the inmates to stand and watch. They were forced to look at it live, you know. And he said it was just dreadful. A man guillotined in front of you with the head cut from, from his body. The, the way they killed that poor man in front of him, screaming for his life, like, you know. And he said that was not the first or the last. They killed many, many people like that. Conditions for prisoners were appalling. According to one estimate, of the 70,000 prisoners to pass through the colony, only around 5,000 survived to finish their sentences. Prisoners would sleep on stone slabs, chained together overnight. But violence among prisoners, including murder, was routine and tolerated by the prison authorities. He fought a lot at the beginning. He said that he had to because it was a place, if you don't show you are a man, then you become the target. And what he means by this is if they see you weak, then the other men, prisoners, they use you for sex and then you become like their slave. Escape was often attempted, yet it was rarely successful. The swampy jungles full of deadly snakes and insects stretched for hundreds of kilometres. Caymans lived in the rivers while the seas were treacherous and full of sharks. Convicts who did manage to get away often died in the attempt or were caught and returned. But for all that, the biggest killer was disease. People get really sick all the time. This is because of the two things. One is malnutrition. They virtually give them hardly anything. It's just a bowl of very, very weak soup and and, and piece of bread. Can you imagine living on that all the time? And plus the hard labour. Cassie's cousins both died of yellow fever. 
Cassie himself got sick while working in the brutal logging camps in the jungle. When he was in the jungle, he was struggling because he, he didn't have any, any shoes, you know. He said it was, it was dreadful. People, people would kill you for shoes, you know. He said he was feeling sick and eventually he collapsed. He collapsed in the field and they took him to the infirmary. They tried to revive him and as they couldn't, they declared him dead and they put him in, a, in this room where they threw all the bodies. Then um, they gathered the guards to take them in this small boat into, in, into the ocean and, and threw them to the to sharks, like, you know. So that's, and, that's how they get rid of the dead prisoners? They, oh, God, yes. Yeah, they they throw them they, into the sea? Oh, yeah, they become food. They become food to, to the sharks. And the sharks, he, he was saying, the sharks are incredibly... They know when that boat comes. He was saying, you see, you see the sharks coming around, waiting for their food. They know. The food is coming, yeah? And and he said he was virtually dead, and he remembered being carried into the boat, and, and this guy saw kind of, you know, movement in his in his chest, and he just thought, oh, this guy is not dead. So they took him back, and he, they revived him, and he came back. Cassie's sentence was 20 years hard labour, but like most prisoners, under the terms of his sentence, he would not be allowed to leave French Guiana, even when his sentence was over. Cassie told his family they should consider him dead already. He wanted to make himself totally forgotten by the family, so he cut connections, he does not read any of their mail or he doesn't send any mail, nothing at all, because he realises there is no hope to, to come back. And then the family, after a few years' silence, they, they went to the authorities in the, and they complained. Our boy is not writing, we don't know what happened, this and that. So that there was communication between Algeria and, and, and Devs Island and the director of the prison came to him and he forced him and he said to him, you have to write. And being the, the person he was, he, he got a pen and he thought and he just put en vie en espère in French. In other words, we live and hope. And he said to him, that's the letter, send it. In the late 1930s, embarrassed by accounts from escaped prisoners of the appalling conditions, the French government finally announced it was to close the penal colony, but that was delayed by the onset of the Second World War. But when peace came, the French government did begin to shut the prisons one by one and repatriate the inmates. Kassi Saoudi was freed in 1945, while the penal colony was still in operation. When they called him to the office, to tell him you, you're free, you, couldn't, you could not believe it, you know. This is, he said, he said it himself. He said they called me to the office and then they had the nerves to say, we, we always liked you, why don't you stay and all that. If I remember very well, he, he responded to them saying, you see these numbers? To, you know, because they were marked. They were, had numbers tattooed on their arm. Tattooed on their arm. And then, then I think he said to that director, he said, I am the one who lived all these years with this number, treated like an animal, you know. And now he's asking me, to, to, to serve you guys. He returned home to Algeria in 1946 and went on to become a respected civil servant. He died in his home village in 1990 at the age of 83. Only in his final years would he talk about his experience as a convict of Devil's Island. Bashir Saudi co-wrote a book about his father's story called The Guillotine Choice, which was published in 2014. My father was always quiet for a long time, and he prefers to forget it. Living through the hell, he didn't care about anything except to serve the people of his town. All his life, is work to serve those people. Bashir Saudi was talking to Alex last. If you go to our website, just search for BBC Witness, you can see a photo of 673 convicts in France being escorted to a ship bound for Devil's Island in 1935. Many of those would not have survived, and those who did might have had to wait another 18 years before Devil's Island stopped being a penal colony. <laughs>